Sadly, we do have some mangy cats that, well, I think they could use a dose of wild garlic. So, James, if you wouldn't mind foraging for some, and maybe we can throw it out to the lions. Of course, we would never do that. And I wonder if these cats would eat something like wild garlic if they came across it. It would definitely help with the smell that is coming off of these cats at the moment. They are very, very stinky. There's the most bizarre smell around the Kahumas today. And Jamie mentioned it this morning as well. It smells like fish. I don't know if it's the carcass that smells like that or what on earth has happened here, but it is not very pleasant, unfortunately. But you can see that the Nguhumas are fast asleep, as they would be on a hot, sunny summer's day. But they don't look too hot. There's not a, a huge amount of panting going on. And I suppose that's also because, they, even though their bellies are full, they're not as distended as they were a couple of days ago. So I'm sure that that buffalo carcass must be almost done. But uh, I, I don't even know if they've pulled it out of the drainage line. It was very, very difficult to try and, of course, have a look at it. Because yesterday, not yesterday, the day before, uh, they'd dragged it right into a very hard area to have a look at. But I don't think that there's too much left. Now, there's three adult lionesses here and all the cubs are laying about in between them. So I suspect that the youngest lioness and Amber Eyes and Mr. Informo are just off into the distance somewhere, probably lying just a little bit away. And we see that quite often with Amber Eyes and the youngest lioness. They, they seem to enjoy each other's company quite a bit, even though they love the rest of the lionesses and they all have strong bonds between each other. It's like you always have a favorite. They probably just maybe have a better connection than the others. Maybe the, the common denominator with the two of them is that they don't have cubs. And the other three lionesses, the ones we're looking at, of course, have had lots of little cubs. But fast asleep. I reckon that lioness is probably going to move as her head is now in the sun. You can see as it starts to drop a little bit further down towards the horizon, the sun is starting to creep in, so she might shuffle. So we might get a bit of excitement, a little bit of movement. Remember, this is, of course, a live safari, so we'd love to hear from you. So if you have any questions about these gorgeous cats, you're welcome to hashtag Safari Live on Twitter, or you can send us an email, questions at wildearth.tv. Like I said, myself, James, and Jamie, love to have chats with you. So please send on some questions. There's a big stretch. Oh, I'm just fiddling with my game drive comms, so I make sure I'm not missing out on anything. There's a lot of chattering going on today, and hopefully this means that there's something exciting out and about. There we go, a couple of the cubs rolling around, turning themselves over now. But, no, not for too long, though, just a quick, quick scratch. Maybe a fly was biting it, or an ant, and then, of course back to sleep again. See how her belly is just completely missing here. You can see a little bit. And I'm, I'm very concerned about her because it doesn't seem to be getting better just yet. And I, I just hope that she is going to be able to overcome this. She is a fighter, as you've all said before, and, and we've witnessed it. She is indeed a fighter, but look how tattered her ears are. But not so tattered that her ears still flops. She's sort of lost that now. As soon as the swelling went down, it uh, went back to its normal self again. And I thought that was quite a cute feature that she had. And it's, and it's again, when identifying different animals, that's a unique feature that that little lioness has. And it's something that you would have been able to identify her by. But fast asleep. Just twitching their ears. And that seems to be all that's going on out here this afternoon with the Nkuhumas. Any of the other lions, oh there we go, he can see her belly. So then they of course, that's that's of course the, the negative side of the, what, what the Birminghams have done, how they have split up now. They don't have the strength in numbers. But that hair is completely gone. There are a couple of ticks you can see on her belly. 
And she should be able to groom herself, so I wonder if she's just not feeling tired and weak. That can't be very nice. She looks so itchy. Oh, I'm so sorry, my girl. Let's just keep our fingers crossed that the rain will help her immunity push through. Like I said, it's not the first time she's pushed through something. She's definitely a fighter. Oh, look at her little tail as well. Now, looking at having a closer inspection of these ticks. Donna, you were wondering, do you get paralysis or do we get paralysis ticks down here like you get in Australia? That's a good question. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, one of the main uh, diseases that are brought about here by ticks, um, and particularly by the born tick, is... Um, um, not, I was going to say Bilharzia for a second, but it's not Bilharzia. I was talking about Bilharzia the other day. Sorry about that. Biliary or tick bite fever. And that is caused by the ticks, and that can attack their liver, which is not good. It makes you feel exceptionally lethargic. But I don't know if it causes paralysis. When we get it as humans, it's horrendous. You get a migraine, you, you feel like a bit dizzy, so you almost get vertigo, you're nauseous, and you just feel absolutely exhausted. It feels like you haven't slept in about six weeks, and your energy is just completely drained from your body. But I don't know what the animals would feel. I don't know if they get similar symptoms. Uh, it, it's obviously it's very difficult to try because you can't just ask a lion, do you have a headache? You know, or do, are your paws sore? You know, we don't know any of these things. Everything we, we know about animals is all just speculation. And we just sort of try and put theories together. But the being out here in the wild is just incredible. And you learn this after you've been doing it for long enough, is that anything that all the books, various books say, you'll, there'll be a situation at one point where you come across an animal doing something completely different to what everybody else has said in the past. And that's it. You've just got to learn for yourself. Take every experience and remember it or take a note and form your own opinions.